Well, it's that time of year again. Well, if you've watched my channel for long, you know that uh, every fall I head out into Eastern Oregon with uh, Jason of Primal Outdoors. Two years ago, we ran his route from uh, Bend to the Alver Desert, uh, all through the backcountry on dirt roads. Then last year, we picked up where we left off at the Alver Desert and continued on through the Owyhee Canyon lands, uh, scouting an additional, basically an extension to the route. When we were out here last year, some possible alternate routes caught our eye, complete with some new points of interest to check out. So this year's mission is to figure out if we can connect to last year's route and see what else we can find along the way. I left Eugene early this morning in order to meet up with Jason in an Eastern Oregon town. Also joining us this year is Shari of the YouTube channel Out and Back Oregon. We've made camp right away along a nice little river and we will set out tomorrow on our journey. I don't know if you guys have met Shy on my channel before. Hello. This is Shy, and he actually has uh, his own YouTube channel. I do. Out and Back Oregon. What are you doing out and back Oregon? Uh, mostly just exploring Oregon uh, and the surrounding states. Kind of the cool thing about it is I do it in a Dodge Durango, which is different than what everybody else is doing. When we got here and we were checking out the uh, river earlier, uh, Jason noticed that there were some crawdads swimming around in the rocks, and so um, he decided to see if he could catch himself some dinner. So murky, you can't see him. Gotcha. Jason eventually snagged enough crawdads for a meal, in addition to the fish he also caught in the river. got some crawfish that we got out of the river, some smallmouth bass that we also got out of the river, and then of course some broccoli that we got from Safeway. <laughs> <laughs> Shai is putting some dinner together himself, so I guess I should probably get something cooked up for me. Now, as you might have noticed, the pickup is still in sort of pickup truck mode. Since the whole camper testing deal ended up not working out, I thought about putting the canopy back on the truck for this trip, but I was a little tight on time, and so I decided to just go ahead and throw some stuff in the back of the truck. Now, I had been working on a little DIY project in the back, which is this DIY bed slide, and I will show you more about that later. But uh, I'm gonna see how it goes on this trip, and uh, we'll just go back to the old trusty gazelle. Because I am using such a sort of back to the basics, uh, minimalist setup here, um, I've planned my meals to be also as simple as possible. I've tried to plan one pan dinners for all of the nights. This simple take on beef stroganoff is actually a throwback to the very first cooking segment I ever did in the early days of the channel about four years ago. I pre-cooked some grain-free lentil pasta at home in order to preserve water and propane while out on the trip.
This is new ground for all of us. We don't know for sure that the course we've plotted will actually get through to where we ended up last year, but that's why we're out here, to find out if this route is even viable. sort of like the third series in the series of series. Uh, two years ago, Jason and I ran his Ben to Elverd route, and then last year we met back up at the Elverd Desert and explored a continuation of the route. Last year we ran into some issues with private land that we couldn't get across, even though usually you can get across private land out here. So we had some ideas about a possible alternative to what we did. So today we're actually coming in backwards on the tail end of sort of a possible next segment of the route. So we started where the route would potentially end up. It's interesting how we can just go for miles and miles across these desert hills and then suddenly sink into this sort of fertile little valley that uh, is green and being farmed in some way. And then right back to the desert. And we're enjoying this uh, sort of scenic, leisurely drive through these rolling hills of desert, yet yeah, this is, you know, this is just everyday work for some people. experience has generally been out here on these range lands where the cattle run on private land, the cattle also run on public land. Um, there's often gates both on public land and private land and usually you can pass through everything. So you can kind of see that lighter color area is a piece of private land and uh, none of the gates are locked or, or there's no, no trespassing signs and this road connects from this BLM to this patch of BLM and so it looks like we're fine. But I think generally if they didn't want vehicles going through they would have it pretty well marked with no trespassing signs. Yeah, so we got through that chunk of private land and we're back on BLM land and uh, I think that's it for today. We should be all on public land for the rest of the day. Oh, it's now 2.30 in the afternoon. We've been going for a lot of hours already today. And uh, aside from a quick stop for some lunch, it's pretty much all been sort of like this. Just lots of driving through gentle rolling hills of sagebrush desert. We'll see what we find later. I'm not 100% convinced that this is the most compelling sort of way out from the rest of the route further to the south and the east.
largely flat high desert we've been traversing all day has given way to the canyon. That we're now descending towards the river seems to be a good sign that our route planning will work out. It's been a long day, but it's looking really good. We found the trail we wanted along the river, and it's just a handful of miles further to the spot we're hoping to reach. Our destination is on the other side of the river, but we'll cross that bridge, or lack thereof, when we get to it. As we've proceeded up the canyon, the trail has grown increasingly narrow, and Jason is having more and more trouble squeezing his van through some pinch points. So the issue here is the track got really narrow, there's a big rock that's going to push the van off camber, and then it just drops off. So it's a tight squeeze, uh, we're going to just sort of spot him through, bring him up and see uh, if it looks like he can fit. Because I'm always worried about the van being off camber. Now the problem is, you see this road's not very wide. It's just barely wide enough for the van as it is. So Jason had sort of a sixth sense to just stop and walk up this road before we got any further committed. And uh, it was a pretty good thing he did because uh, the road was getting narrower and we're having trouble getting the van through. But then it gets narrower, narrower, and narrower until it becomes basically you would need a motorcycle. So, so it's not going to work. Yeah, not, not gonna work. It looks like uh, back to guy and a little bit of mapping and see what else we can see if we can make something else work. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is definitely a no-go for the van, and it's barely big enough for a quad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too bad because man, we're so close. so beautiful in there too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why we did this, though. Right. We had to find out. Yep. Exactly.
for now, we're tired and hungry, so we're just going to find some place to camp and make a new plan for tomorrow. That is, if Jason can ever get that van turned around. There's a lot more of this adventure to come. Subscribe now so you don't miss an episode, and thank you for watching.